like just in this place where I don't know what my purpose is and it keeps like gnawing at me and I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be but I don't know where to go from there and it's um really challenging and I know there's a lot of the stories that I'm caught up in and I don't know how to get out of them because they're real situations all right well uh congratulations on knowing what you don't want to do or not want to be a part of <laughs> I think some people get duped into doing something or they at least in the past they've gotten and I myself included I was I caught myself doing things I didn't even want to do and definitely weren't my calling and somehow to fit in or to be cultural or to be normal I did them and that's so that's part of what you're going through is like the inspiration of what it was for me to write this book in the first place yeah and finding what your calling is it's like I'm, i've been listening to this awesome book about dharma lately called the great work by stephen cope have you ever heard of that that's a fun one it dives deep into all these different subjects that he believed followed their dharma ranging from uh, gandhi to beethoven to harriet tubman and how they live their lives, the commonalities, the differences. He believed they all fully embodied their dharma, basically meaning that they were like an instrument. Yeah. They were an instrument to a calling, even more so than their identity of being a human being. Yeah. And I'm, what I'm hearing you say is like, it sounds like you want to have that feeling or like you want to embody whatever, maybe what, what, what wants to live through you or how can you be an instrument to something greater than your personal identity and you, and you feel like you're not there exactly. Is that right? It's more of like, I don't have a personal identity and I'm very fluid and I don't know how to be, um, regenerative with the gifts that I do give and and the things that I do because it's like there's so many moments where I'm like yeah this is what I'm here for like these are these moments where I'm just like here helping people and like being a clear mind for others who get all caught up in other things but it's like everything I've done has just been like volunteer work here and there like or a lot of it's just been like gifts it's never anything that's helped me get out of um this financial rut that i'm in but then also like in thinking it's like there's it's so broad what i do that i don't even know how to like focus it and i don't have like a blanket idea so it's like and when you say so broad in what you do what, what do you mean what you do like what you do so for volunteering or for work or for fun well, or yeah it's like you know, I'm an educator and I'm a crafter and I'm a singer and a dancer and I love to help people and organize and like be there to help manage situations and like make sure things look good and like just like having a lot of like those overseeing managerial kind of things but with no actual experience behind it and like always being thoughtful and making sure the whole group has everything it needs and like having these different levels of conscientiousness um and stuff like that but then you know being really into like the herbalism and wanting to know more about my health and my diet and it's just it just feels like i don't there's enough not enough time hmm. <laughs> i don't think i ever have enough time hmm. what do you think of a chapter there is no waste of time i resonated i resonated with it and it still didn't stop me from feeling like i wish i could divide myself multiple times because it's like my brain works over time like sometimes I identify myself as a muse because it's like the ideas that come through me are going so quickly that it never doesn't feel like there's time even though I know I can tell myself there's time like but it still doesn't I there's still this part of me that refuses to believe that time doesn't exist and, and that everything right on time What's the thing that you feel like you have the least amount of time for? Like, or where you're most limited amount by time? Is there a specific, out of all the things you listed, is there one specifically that's like, that's where time seems to be the biggest limitation? I just, it feels like all of it. It feels like, it just feels like it's all of it. Like, things that I need to do on the computer, I don't do because I don't like staring at a computer screen. 
And when I do stare at a computer screen, it's like mindless stuff instead of actually like getting work done to benefit myself. And that never, it never feels like there's enough time for that because I want to honor my cycle and I know that I don't want to stare at screens before bed. And so it's not something I want to stay up all night doing. And I don't, I don't know. That's... Okay, and we'll we'll bounce it a little bit back and forth. And you're um, you said you mentioned something about your fi- like I heard something along the lines you're finally going to see a therapist or something, or you got a therapist for yeah. what are you referencing with that? Um, I I don't know. I'm like trying to figure out. Like I know that there's like this ultimate hesitation that I have in life, and. I want to kind of unpack that and I know that I have like different stories that have been ingrained in my childhood and my upbringing that I want to dissolve and I felt like a therapist was the only person that I could psychologically trust to provide the proper tools because like I've worked you know I've talked to Reiki healers and like you know other more um, spiritual peoples but it becomes like I don't take them as seriously because they don't have any sort of psychological background, even though I don't want to be normalized. And that's kind of like what psychologists are doing or normalizing you. So, but it's like, I just want to talk to somebody to kind of figure out if I even need to be in therapy or if I'm just like caught up in some stupid moment that I can just like step out of. I don't know. So you want you want a therapist to find out if you need a therapist? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. It seems like there's a lot of uh, like you're living, uh, you're or you're seeing things in a very fragmented way, like lots yeah. of, and that's I'm not saying that's accurate or not, um, but it might be closer to what's real. But let let's with our last three minutes here, let's pretend that you being a human being and me being a human being that lit like this idea that we are maybe waves to the same ocean or cells to the same body out of all the things out of all those crafts and those gifts and those activities that you named what's the best way to contribute to the ocean what is what, what or what's the what is it that this cell known as you can give that would contribute to the whole body in the best way possible? I feel like people that know me would tell you the answer, but like, I can't. What do you think they would say? I don't know what they would say, but I feel like they would have, I don't know. And that makes me sad. And then I, and then I also heard a reference to a financial rut that you're in. Is that what you're referencing as your challenge? Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, just because you had, you might be seeing, maybe you're a specific cell or a specific ocean that sees the ocean. You see it all. You see so much of it and it can be overwhelming. It's like, I don't know. There's so much. It doesn't even make sense. Maybe. And that's fine. That's fine. But I, what I will say is one principle that has highly resonated with me, and especially maybe for someone that's in your situation, is that when one is in need, plant a seed. So if you feel like a financial, you're being challenged financially right now, I would be curious of what it would look like if you helped people financially. If you yeah. helped others with their finances... That, and I'm not sure exactly what your financial situation is, but the same exact thing you're challenging, challenged with financially, I wonder what would happen if you started helping others with that for you and for them. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, that's my lifestyle. Like, I support small business. I'm always helping. Like, but maybe I'm... that's what I'm saying. You're supporting small business in the sense, maybe that's what you're, you, since you're financially struggling, I'm imagining you are a small business in some way or the other. What happens if you started supporting huge business? <laughs> like what if you started supporting a millionaire or a billionaire? 
I'm wondering what then would happen because that it doesn't sound like you need support in being a small business. It sounds like you're good at that. I'm saying it sounds like you want to not be limited by finances. So what if you supported someone that wasn't limited by finances? Yeah, it's an interesting thought. <laughs> And, and, you know, you, like you said, you have a heavy heart. Where are you? In New York City or something? Uh, Washington, D.C. In Washington, D.C. <laughs> okay, pretty From San Diego, they're, they're pretty close to each other. Um, yeah, I, like, I don't know. It's, it looks like I'm looking at you, and we're over 11 minutes here, but I'm looking at you, and it seems like, what about, do you run? Have you exhausted yourself physically? Have you pushed yourself to the brink of exhaustion physically? No. That, I'm just going to say, I think that's a good idea for you. I, I don't know if it's a, a run right now. I don't know if you have a place to exercise. And I'm not saying, I'm not even saying, I'm, I'm thinking of you doing more like a, have you ever seen like dynamic meditations? Like the Osho dynamic meditations? No. Yeah, there's something like, I'm, I'm, I would wonder what would happen for your beliefs around you if you fully exhausted yourself physically. I'm talking screaming, dancing, crying, <laughs> laughing, running, maybe pounding the ground in a soft way, screaming on the top of your lungs, maybe being silent, holding your breath, screaming your breath, like really seeing what your instrument is made of physically in a safe way. I'm encouraging this all at safety first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, and then seeing what that might shake up. It might there might be because if there's something if there's a mental blockage that might mean there's a physical blockage. Yeah. And we can, we don't have to, if, if the mental blockage seems more challenging to overcome, someone can maybe first overcome the, if it's easier for them to overcome the physical blockage, that just carries over in the mental world. Run, 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 run. Run, run, run.